Well, hello there. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this watch along, this live watch along of Senseless by James McDermott. Um, my name is Steve Waters. Uh, I'm Professor of Script Writing at the University of East Anglia, and I've also had the privilege of being the so called academic lead on the development of Senseless over, well, really the last 18 months. Just to remind you, this is part of a wider endeavour which we're calling Future in Form at UEA, and it's to mark the 50th anniversary of creative writing at the university. But instead of looking backwards, uh, we wanted to try and explore a way of looking into the future, if you like, uh, and exploring um, how writing and technology might intersect in uh, this extraordinarily transformative time that we find ourselves in. And of course, we found out that the year that we are in meant that only by means of technology were we able to make anything at all. Uh, when we started Senseless uh, back at the beginning of really sort of February 2020, uh, we were sitting in a theatre thinking about it as a venue. Now we've ended up um, on a live stream on YouTube um, and working in a completely digital mode. And I think that's an indication of why this has been a very necessary and exciting experiment. Now, I'm going to introduce you to two key figures, James McDermott and Dan Shorten, in a second, and they're just appearing on my screens. Hi, James. Hi, Dan. Welcome. Um, before I big them up and say a little bit about them, let me just <coughs> tell you a bit about the structure of tonight. So we're not going to spend too long chatting before the screening itself. So we're going to just give you a bit of context uh, and, and maybe sort of five, ten minutes or so just kind of set up the viewing. Then we're going to watch Senseless all together. Uh, it lasts about 45 minutes, so it should come down about nine o'clock. And then we would invite you, and we'd be delighted if you could sort of pop some questions into the chat for James or for Dan, or, or possibly myself, but I think more likely to be Dane, James and Dan as they are the artists uh, who are responsible for this extraordinary piece of theatre performance. This is one of the questions that we're going to need to answer tonight, but it's certainly theatre and performance and digital art, it's a fantastic hybrid of something that in some respects uh, is very, very difficult to categorise. Um, so let me just say uh, a little bit about James, first of all. I've had the, the pleasure of teaching James many years ago. I've known James for about eight years now. I knew him as an undergraduate at the University of East Anglia uh, as an extremely talented uh, member of our MA in script writing course. Uh, where I, dis I supervised his dissertation play, which turned into a, a beautiful play, Time and Tide, which was actually, James, I think the last piece of live theatre I saw before the dreadful events of March 2020, when it was on at the Park Theatre in London. And it, and it typified uh, James's incredible qualities as a writer of enormous warmth, wit, character, uh, very perceptive about place and belonging and sexuality and desire. Many of these things feed into uh, senseless in a really interesting way. Uh, James uh, is also extraordinarily good at working in different contexts and across media. To give you a small example of that, he is a performer writer, exemplified by his wonderful show Rubber Ring, uh, one of the funniest things I've seen in recent theatre. Um, he's a poet, he just had his first volume of poetry, Monatomy, published last year. Uh, he's writing for television, I think I'm allowed to say that, am I James? Give me a quick nod. Uh, that he's writing for a very popular soap opera that many of you will have watched in your time. You can ask him about that later. Uh, he's under commission to just about everybody you can imagine under the sun. I hope he's keeping up with all those commissions. Uh, but he's certainly one of those people who just wonderfully delivers as he did with us for Senseless. So, uh, James, uh, uh, welcome again. Uh, Dan, meanwhile, is the perfect match for James because Dan uh, is a man who loves the challenge as a director. He's had 20 years as an award-winning director doing a, a range of projects um, and particularly quite often large-scale projects, Dan, for often public contexts like anything from the Tower of London to Glastonbury to the Barbican. And James is obviously, sorry, Dan is uh, uh, sort of works at Guildhall and Guildhall Light Events where he's creative director. And Guildhall Live events have delivered half of our future informed projects. But I think, I mean, I'll, I'll check this with Dan, but this must have been one of the most demanding because this is actually a, almost a full length piece of work. Uh, we're talking at a feature length piece. So to have turned that around in the time uh, that we've had uh, is nothing short of a miracle. So, James, I'd like to invite you to sort of 
start us off with a few thoughts about what we're going to watch tonight, how sense this has come about, something of the genesis of it and 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 you know what you want viewers to sort of know about before they watch it in its totality. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, thank you for everyone being here this evening. Uh, it's really lovely to have people here to watch the show after 18 months of working on it. So I think it's important to say that uh, Senseless is a two-hander about a couple who meet in an imagined digital lockdown set in the near future for a digital virus that if you catch it, your system will shut down like a computer. You will lose your senses and your ability to express yourself. And it's how a couple go about navigating uh, that virus in their lives when they first start dating. It's important to say as well that because of COVID, we cast two pairs of actors and uh, rehearsed with all four actors. And when we came to shoot the play, uh, which was like a strange sentence to say because it's not a film, but when we came <laughs> to shoot the play, uh, we decided to uh, use all of those actors. So there is a cast switch at some point in the play, uh, the purpose of which is solely because of COVID and kindness, because we'd asked four people to be in a room for two weeks and didn't just <laughs> want to give it to two people. Uh, so don't think that's some kind of avant-garde theatre technique that people <laughs> might not understand. It really isn't. It's just practicality and kindness. Mm. Uh, I think it's worth saying as well that the piece is very much in an R&D stage. We're playing with this technology, we're playing with this story. Uh, we hope that when it is staged, it will exist in a theater and the audience will experience it as a live performance with that tech as well. Uh, mm. So yeah, it's very much a prototype. We're learning as we're watching too. I think that's everything. Dan, Thank is there you. anything else to add on the tech? Yeah, side? Dan, I mean, uh, it would be lovely if you could just give us some sort of pointers towards the sort of technology you've drawn down here and, and also just things about the way we're presenting it tonight with the split screen and so on. It'd be useful to have a few preparatory <coughs> thoughts. Yeah, sure. So um, as James has alluded to there, this this is very much the sort of product of an experiment, really. Phase one, I think. Um, what we've been using here is a technology that is predominantly used in other settings, um, you know, broadcast settings. And we were trying to sort of push how that might be adapted for um, theatre makers. I think that something to bear in mind, you're going to see two camera feeds on your on your screen when we get into the, the actual broadcast itself. The top one is what we call our composite feed. And uh, that one has got everything that um, we've made. And the, the bottom screen is a wide shot just from a camera as if it was a seat in the auditorium. So, we're trying to give you sort of an impression of what it might have been like to sit in a theater and watch this happen, although it's limited by the fact that it is only a, a, camera, a camera shot at the moment. And then at the top screen, this composite screen, you're gonna see three layers of information, our sort of background projection of the setting, our live actors in the space itself, and then some foreground special effects. And all of that stuff was done in real time live. There's no post-production in it at all. Um, so in the theatre, the idea was that the auditorium audience would be able to see that composite screen at the same time that they're watching the live performance. So we're sort of unpacking the technology for everybody to kind of see it right there and then. And um, I think that the themes of the play um, around sort of, you know, sort of uh, connection and communication via mediation um, was very present in the way that we were thinking about the staging as well. Yeah, that's really well expressed, Dan, actually, because what's so lovely about this is uh, it's almost as like you're seeing, you know, a building and the construction of the building simultaneously. So you've got, you know, I think we, we it's a real invitation to viewers to watch uh, imaginatively tonight and in a sense see this uh, as a composite in your own imagination as well as the composite screen that we've got and, and the kind of live view. Um, and I think it's lovely that we, we're putting it out live tonight. So that, again, there's that feeling of something, even though this, this material is pre-recorded, it has never been seen by an audience uh, together. Uh, you are the first audience to see that tonight. And if you're here tonight with us on Friday, you really are the first audience. This is the first night. Uh, so we'll be expecting you to be sort of throwing flowers at James and Dan uh, <laughs> by whatever digital means you can kind of find at the end of the screening. So I, I think that is possibly all we need to say because I think it's really important that people just watch this and enjoy it. I should say that, it, you know, it's a it's a really wonderful, frank 
uh, and and sort of uh, candid piece about sexual experience. So you know, kind of um, that's built in and enjoy that. Um, but obviously, if that doesn't feel appropriate, you may want to tune out <laughs> over the next five minutes or so. Um, otherwise, I think everybody else will just kind of absolutely delight in that. Um, so good luck, everybody. Um, enjoy what you watch. We'll be here uh, when it finishes, ready for your questions. And actually, because we're starting rather promptly, uh, we'll have even more time for those questions. Um, so uh, without further ado, I present to you the debut of Senseless by James McDermott. Hey, I'm Eve, 30 year old Norwich gal looking for mates and dates. Into uh, writing, singing, dancing, and deep chats. Message me, kiss kiss. You promised yourself you wouldn't download this again. But then he promised you would keep it in his pants. And then he sent her dick pics. After months in lockdown, I would love people in my area, Tinder. Only problem is I don't really love people. Still, what have you got for me? What? Lad, lad, lad from Nusa, looking for a bird to- We'll try a poultry farm, Bernard Matthews. No, and you look a bit like him, so, so I'm definitely swiping left. Into bareback, s and and roleplay, looking for similar. Lots of allergies, so must be pet free. No one just wants to chat anymore. Everyone wants to be tied up. I swipe left. 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 Oh, you're cute. Hello, hello, hello. 30 year old scriptwriter from Norwich. Looking for mates and dates. Loves long walks, deep talks, and conversational Spanish. I'm Adam, by the way. Looking to meet my Eve. Gracias. Sexy writer looking for deep chats. You sound nice. Sam sounded nice. Swipe right. <laughs> Yay, it's a match. No, now I've got to talk to you. Which is what I want to do, right? Okay, message Adam. But message what? Mm -hmm. Hey, Adam. Good, nice and casual. You found your Eve. Bad! <laughs> Too cheesy. Is there an unsend button? <laughs> kiss, kiss, kiss. No, too much. Three kisses screamed stalker. Oh, I knew this was a bad idea. I've scared him off. He's calling the police. L Lol. Lol. Well, at least I haven't scared him off. Lol. Is that all I'm getting in response? I thought you said you like deep chats. I do, but you can't have them on there. Well, sorry, Adam, but that's all I'm looking for on here. Your profile pic is lovely, by the way. It's from five years ago, but bless you for that. So's yours, kiss. Mm -hmm. It's five years old, but thanks. Fit, funny, honest, and a writer. Your profile says you write. Mm -hmm. I write plays and songs for my drama students. Tap dancing feet emoji. Mm -hmm. Do you write scripts for stage or screen? Mm -hmm. For screens, I write scripts for computer programs. I'm a computer programmer. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, he's a computer nerd. Do I really fancy chatting away with a computer nerd? Well, at least you still speak conversational Spanish, lol. Mm, may we? That's French, confused face emoji. Yeah, no, I, I don't speak Spanish. J just write it on here because it's what you do, innit? Great, another liar. Lying on dating app profiles, disappointed face emoji. No, not lie, but, well, yeah, no, lie, lol. Well, I, I don't think lying's a lolling matter, actually, Adam. If he's lying now, shut this down. You don't want to talk to him. <sighs> nice chatting, Adam. Mm -hmm. Wait, only little white lie. That's what Sam said. Only lie to sound a bit impressive. Hashtag computer nerd. Not all lies. I do actually like deep chats. Let's have one on Zoom. It's what you want, isn't it? Isn't it? On Zoom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we can't have one in person. Hashtag virus. So, do you fancy a cheeky Zoom? Cheeky Zoom? Cheeky, right. He won't want to chat, he'll want to wank. Might not. 
Can I ask him? I can't ask you if he means a wank. How cheeky are we talking, Adam? Magnifying glass emoji. I can show you my hard drive. He means a wank. I just want to chat, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I just want to chat too. <laughs> Whatever. Trying to flirt, but failed. Hashtag computer nerd. Well, if he just wants a chat. Oh, they all just want to chat. But I can always log off. Block him if he gets his floppy disk out. Would you say cheeky zoom with your fave new computer nerd lol? He's sweet. Sam was sweet. Sam is gone. Moved on. You should. It's just a chat. What you say? May we kiss, kiss, kiss. then i uh thought you just want to chat let me see your hard drive no because I, I just want to chat shut up it's if come on let me see your hard drive and i'll show you my <laughs> your what usb portal usb jesus all right, shut up. usb portal yeah, all right. i was just trying to speak your language mr computer nerd. oh well my language is english let's have a chat in english let me see your hard drive no i don't know you i don't want to show you my hard drive don't you find me attractive I don't know. You don't know? No, yeah, what I mean is your your profile picture was attractive. But I'm not in person. We haven't met in person. Me now. But not in person. Your photo looks attractive. Your pixels look attractive. You have like, lovely Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's the <laughs> nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Really? No, Adam, not really. <laughs> but your pixels look attractive too. Well, that really is the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Now, show us your hard drive. No, you don't know who's watching. Who's watching? Webcams. They're cameras. Cameras watch, Eve. I thought you said you worked in computers. I do. So how come you're scared of computers? <laughs> because I work in computers. And isn't everyone scared of computers now? Only because of the virus. Show me your hard drive. I I'd like to get to know you first. No one knows who they show their bits to. Well, I do. People get their bits out for strangers all the time. You can get arrested for that. Yeah, not on the internet. Well, I don't get my bits out for strangers, so there. <gasps> it's small, isn't it? What? No, 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 no. It, it, it isn't small. It isn't small. Oh. Well, no, it isn't massive, <laughs> so don't get your hopes up, but it isn't small. Well, I won't believe you unless you show me. Well, I'm not going to show you. I don't show my bits to people I know nothing about. Why are you looking at me as if that's weird? Imagine walking into a club and instead of saying, like, hello, I'm Adam, what's your story? You say, hello. Uh, you don't know me from Adam, Very but good. boom, have a look at him. You're welcome. But we're not in a club. We're, we're online. We met on Zoom to, to... To chat, to get to know each other. Yeah, right. Like, that's why you're here. That really is why I'm here. I just want to chat. Why is that so weird? With a stranger. Well, you're a stranger now. You won't be after we chat. How sad is that? Meeting and talking to a human being. Yeah. I haven't spoken to a human being for ages. Not <laughs> because you're a computer nerd. Because of the lockdown. <laughs> Jesus. Sorry. But, yeah, I do spend all day talking to Alexa, Siri. That's sadder to me. But not as sad as getting your bits out for a stranger online. Right, well, I'm going to go. Oh, because I won't show you my cock. It's a bit direct. <laughs> I'm being direct. You're asking to see my hard drive, which is more of a floppy disk at the minute anyway. Let's talk then. Great. Dirty. Let's talk dirty. Great. Talk that's what you wanted, isn't it? Uh, not quite, no. What would you do to me if I was there right now? You are here right now. In the flesh, I mean. Talk to you? What would you do to my body, Adam? Nothing, because of the virus. It it's... wasn't a virus! Well... What would you do to my hot, wet, naked body? I'd, um... I'd... I'd smash your back doors in. You'd... You, you, you bitch. Bitch! You said talk dirty! Not nasty! God, I'm sorry. Bitch. I'm so sorry. You don't know me. Well, that's what they say, isn't it? Who? When they talk dirty. Porn. I've never really done dirty talk. <laughs> no one talks like porn stars in real life, Adam. Literally every man I know talks like porn stars in real life. <laughs> but not me. I haven't got the voice for it. It, it just sounds silly or, or threatening. <sighs> Look, um, I, I'll go. Don't uh, go. Eve, I'm not going to show you my hard drive. Not 
yet. Anyway, not yet. <laughs> I might do eventually in time if we get on. If we actually even like each other, we might be horrible people. I'm not a horrible person. No, I'm not. But I could be to you. Who knows? And wouldn't you rather know before seeing the hard drive of a horrible person? Well, the only way we're going to know if we're nice people is by talking. I'm not sure I'm really in the mood for talking tonight. On the app, you said you were. I was. You said that's all you wanted. I thought it was, but. But what? Then I saw you. A sexy man. A stranger. And you got a horny. I got scared. Scared? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to talk to strangers. It's hard to talk to anyone. <laughs> but not hard to show them your USB portal. Not online. No. <laughs> you really do just want to talk, then. I really do just want to talk. And if you don't, then, then it was nice not talking to you. And I'll see you around, maybe. Don't go. Let's do it. Let's talk. We talk all the time. No, no, no. I know. Have but done for what? Six, seven weeks now? Six weeks, five days. But it's a bit creepy, you know that? It isn't creepy, it's romantic. And we've been romantic on here. Sex? No. Well, we have, though. Lots. Now you have to show me a bit. <laughs> now we've got to know each other. It's not really sex, though, is it? Thanks very much. But wanking at each other over the internet. Well, it's a live, interactive sexual experience <laughs> with each other. <laughs> That's the least sexy sentence. <laughs> In the I've same ever. room as each other. <laughs> same chat room. Exactly. Live, interactive sexual experience with each other in the same room as each other. It sounds like real sex to me. It sounds like sex with a computer nerd. <laughs> I am a computer nerd. What I meant was we've, we've been romantic, not by... by... Wanking at each other. Yes, thank you, Adam. Not by, but, but, <laughs> but by having dinner together on Zoom. And Zoom nights out on the piss. Hung over bacon sarnies and coffee on Zoom afterwards. So <laughs> I don't see how you can say that our... Our... Our what? Our thing. Thing? Yes, for now. Thing. <sighs> that our thing doesn't feel real. Well, because it isn't real to me. Unless we do it in real life. Do what in real life? Our uh, thing. Meet, have dinner, go out, have bacon sarnies and coffee. But we do all that stuff. Yeah, but not together, not in real life. This is real life. No, it's digital life. Which is real life no, now. It's, it's just a part of real life. Anyway, shush. <laughs> I want to meet you, Eve, in person, in the flesh. Well, we can't, not yet. Why not? Because the lockdown. Yeah, yes. But it's just been lifted. It, no, I know, but the virus is still here. The case is decreasing. Not according to the news. Well, they are according to the news I'm watching. Regardless, I feel unsafe. <laughs> That's just your feeling. Your feelings aren't real. My feelings aren't real? No, oh. Don't say that to an artist. What, what I mean is your feelings aren't facts. Facts like data, Mr. Computer Program. Yeah, exactly. And I've seen the data from my company saying we're safe. Yeah, so. but that's not, that's not the real data. That's... That's fake news. Fake news. Yeah, facts. Your company needs people to Oh my to God, it's like talking to Twitter. So their customer and customers and staff don't feel unsafe. <laughs> it's humans that spread the virus. Yeah, a computer virus. A virus from computers. Well, yeah, but... That makes humans shut down, Adam. Lose the ability to move and feel and be creative. Yes, in extreme makes cases. Makes them an algorithm until they eventually crash and can't restart. Eve... It's like COVID, you can only catch it through human contact, so... So why risk meeting in the flesh yet? Because we've been isolating, we can get tested, we can keep our distance. What's the point meeting right now? To meet in real life. We've met in real life. No, I've met pixels, sound waves, Eve. I want to meet in the flesh. But why right now when we won't be able to touch? Our energies can touch. <laughs> All right, Buddha. <laughs> you know what I mean. You don't get energy back from a screen. And we can talk. We've talked for weeks. Yeah, with our thumbs. Talking now with our mouths. At pixels. But my pixels. At your devices. Sexy, sexy pixels. Your online avatars. Which are more real than me. What? More real than you? Look, um, shall we... Wank at each other over the internet. Uh, no, 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 no. A man turning down sex. You can't be a real man. Well, I'm not. I'm pixel sound waves. Stop trying to avoid really talking to me. 
What do you mean your online avatars are more real than you? Inside, inside I know how big and brilliant I am. You are big and brilliant. I know I am. I don't need you to tell me. <laughs> God, I was just being nice. I'm as big and brilliant as, as the internet, mate. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I would. But... Anyway, <laughs> shut up. Who asked you? I'm opening up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Sorry. And on the internet, I can be my big and brilliant self. Mm -hmm. My real self. But in public, with other people. Is that why you really don't want to meet? You're worried you're not going to be as real, as really interesting as your online avatars? Of course I'll be as interesting. You're worried I'm not going to find you as sexy as I find your sexy, sexy pixels? I think you're projecting. <laughs> well, maybe I am. Do you not think I'm scared shitless about meeting you too? Of course I am. But that fear... It's a feeling I'm willing to brave to see if we have a real connection. We have a real connection online. Yeah, until the Wi-Fi cuts out. And I meant like a human, physical, bodily connection. Energy. Energy. Which is just a feeling that isn't real anyway, right? Oh my just God, data, shut up. Scientific equations and chemical reactions <laughs> like the ones in computers, shut right? up. <laughs> so, come on then, get tested and meet me in the flesh. What'd you say? Adam. I love what we have now. It's dreamy. So let's not risk, risk destroying it by... By what? Making it real? We won't destroy it. We'll develop it, deepen it. I just don't feel ready. Because of the virus? Because of the virus. <sighs> this has nothing to do with the virus. You clearly just don't want something real. Don't psychoanalyze me. No, don't you know how bad this is making me feel? Making me feel ugly and boring because you don't want to meet. Making me feel predatory, like I'm having to pressure you and bully you into meeting. Then stop. No. No, because I know deep down underneath all the doubts, you want to meet. Because, not that you ever think to ask, but I'm big and brilliant too. Now, not at first. I'm shy, clumsy, I'll just bang on about computers, boring twat. But when I find someone like you, it's like a kindred spirit who helps me be brave enough to be my real self. I'm magnificent. You'll love me. Look, Eve, we've helped each other be our real selves online. I think we can help each other be our real selves in person. I told you about the last real thing I had. Yeah, I'm not going to hurt you like Sam did. Can't promise you won't hurt me. I didn't promise anything. But not having a real thing with you... That will hurt me. Adam. I want to meet Eve. And if you don't, then... Well, then... I think that's the end of... I think that's the end of... Hey. Hi. Hey, it's uh, it's good to meet you. And you. For real. In person. <laughs> In the flesh. <laughs> uh, um, sorry. No, go on. No, 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 it's fine. You go, ladies first. Piss off. <laughs> what? Ladies first. Oh my God, I was being nice. Being patronizing. <laughs> oh my God. What's funny? <laughs> well, there's that energy. <laughs> so, how are you? Oh, good. Good, yeah, just been working. A uh, new computer, beautiful it is. It's, um, it's, what, you're smirking? <laughs> you said you'd talk about computers. Oh, uh, only at first, when I'm... <laughs> you're tall. You're small. I'm not. It's just smaller than I expected then. Is that a problem? What? No, of course not. God, I I is my height a problem? No, shut up, don't be daft. <laughs> good, good. You look, like, great, by the way. I know. So do you. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what to say. Me neither. It feels like... Like what? Just like we've said everything already. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what, what would you like to do then? Dinner? Oh, I've eaten. Oh. Have you? No, no, I have. Um, uh, a drink? Bars aren't open because of... Because of the virus. Yeah, because of the virus, yeah. Right. <laughs> Um... Uh, 
Well, we could go back to mine. What? Just for a bacon sarni and a coffee or... We aren't supposed... Households aren't supposed to... Be... Well, no, but we've both been tested. Yeah, no, I know. And we've both been working from home, Yeah, so but my housemates, it's... Uh... Have all been self-isolating and working from home too, right? Right. Yeah, no, okay. It's just... Look, going back to yours... For a sarni. And a coffee, yeah. <laughs> it's just... Uh, that might be all I want on our first real date. Oh, you see, I thought we were already dating for real. No, but now we've... <laughs> What I'm saying is, a bacon sarni and a coffee might be all I want. Might be all you're getting. Well, no biscuits in my coffee? No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> Look, uh, you don't have to come back if you don't want to. It's... You don't have to invite me back if you don't want to. Oh, no, I, I, I want to invite you back. I want to come back. Right, good. <laughs> but you don't have to say that if now you've met me, you know, for real, in person, in the flesh, and I'm, I'm like, too tall or just not as sexy as my pixels. I think or... you're magnificent. I think you're big and brilliant, too. I thought I was small. <laughs> so, um, back to mine. All that chat that I put out on the first real life date, kiss, kiss, kiss. Shall we meet to do it again? Lol, tongue out, winky face. What time are we meeting at Wagamars? Or we could skip the chat and go straight to yours. Mm -hmm. What time are we hooking up? Hook up, kiss. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Fuck me. Sorry about last night. That's never happened before. It's fine. It happens to lots of men, kids. Sorry, again. Don't know what's happening. It's fine, again. When am I seeing you? Hey, when are we meeting again? Adam, it's me again. Hope everything's okay as you haven't replied to my messages, sad face. If you're embarrassed or ashamed, don't be. This happens to loads of men. We can meet to chat instead. Right, well, you obs don't want to meet to chat. Clearly, it was all about sex to you. You only tried to convince me our thing wasn't real because you wanted sex in real life till you stopped finding me fit and couldn't keep it up. Bastard, bastard, bastard. Adam, saw us about last night's message. She'd had a bottle of Merlot. Lol. Message me, please. Kiss, 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 kiss. Adam, I haven't heard from you in days now. Please talk to me like we used to. We never talk anymore. Eve. He's alive. I am so sorry for the late replies. I haven't been ignoring you. It wasn't all about the sex. I obviously still find you fit. I've been ill. Ill? It's been stopping me feeling and moving and getting it up. I'm plus. Plus? Pos. Possibly what? No, positive. About what, us? With the virus. OMG, why didn't you tell me? I couldn't leave my bed to get my phone. For a week? For a week. It was that bad. Are you okay, kiss, kiss, kiss? I'm getting there. I want to see you. I want to see you too, but we can't. You probs got it too. What? You're the only person I interact with. Shit. Take the test. OMG, what if I've got it? You'll be fine. You won't. My symptoms were mild. Yours will be too. You're fit. I know. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. You'll be okay. Shit, if I got it, what about my housemates? They aren't fit. 
I know. Dog ugly. <laughs> Lol, you know what I mean. Underlying health conditions. You could come and isolate with me. Move in together. Hardly. But live together. Isolate together. <laughs> just so we can have sex. No, just because I want to spend quality time with you again. Like we did online before we met for real. Thanks to the virus, I can't even keep it up, lol. And I think I really like you. I think I really like you too. Kiss, kiss, kiss. So if you like me, and if you plus, isolate with me. What? I'm... I'm so sorry. It's fine. It... it... it isn't fine. And it isn't because of you. I know that. You move in with me. Isolate with you. Isolate with me. And then we can't even... Stop it. it it's fine. What are you watching? Big Bang Theory. You? Goggle box. Look, turn these off a minute. Adam, it's fine. It might be good for us. How come? Well, since we met in person, all we did was have sex. You know. We'd stop really connecting like we did online. Because we're animals. We aren't just meant to chat online. We're humans, so we're not meant to just have sex. It could be our thing. Sex? No. What then? To get us back to how we were. Messaging each other. What's wrong with that? We're living together isolating together we can talk face to face we're not supposed to we're supposed to be in separate rooms you're positive so it doesn't matter with no symptoms and you're losing your speech i'm i'm not it could help messaging each other when we're in the same house People have been doing that for years. Well, I don't want to send intimate messages to you digitally. <laughs> didn't stop you when we first met. Oh, we didn't have a choice then. We do now. All our messages are stored, you know. Here he goes. It's true. It's stored in data harvesting. This again, who's going to want to read our dirty messages? Perverts. <laughs> You know how dirty they are. If you were a government official, you'd want to read them. I would, to be fair. And I don't want them to be data, to be stored and sold and, and shared. If we can't, like, <sighs> we should just talk. Not really much of a talker. You never shut up. Oi! <laughs> you know what I mean about real stuff? Is that why you want us to message again? I want us to message because it's cute. I want us to message to help you. Is that why our thing became just sexual? Because you're scared of talking in real life? No, I... I'm not scared of talking. I, I'm scared of how men respond when I talk. I'm intrigued now. Talk to me. I'm talking now. Really talk to me. About what? Where your fear of real connection comes from. <laughs> Shut up. See? You're scared to talk. I'm not. I just... Don't know where that comes from. Not that I'm scared of real connection. I know where mine 
comes from, or at least I think I know. Where? If I tell you mine, you've got to tell me yours. Deal. Go on. Dad. When mum died, every time I'd cry, every time I'd want to talk to him about it, would be, would be, men don't cry. Men are doers, not talkers. It's why I love computers, can type, not talk have big emotional chats online. And no one can see you cry behind a screen. Adam. It's your turn. Your speech is getting worse. Oh, come on. men. Grandad died. Dad legged it. Sam cheated and legged it. It's men. Thank you for the record. I'm not gonna leg it. You might. I can't. I'm not gonna die on you either. No, you aren't. You'll be fine. And if you lose the power of speech, we'll work around it. You know, we'll find other ways to communicate. We can still have a real relationship, even if we can't... Even if we can't talk. Because it depends how you class a real relationship, doesn't it? And to me, a real relationship is helping each other through difficult times, overcoming obstacles together. So if you lose the power of speech, then that's what we'll do. We'll find new ways to communicate just how magnificent you are. All right?
Dirty computer walking line. If you look closer, you'll recognize I'm not that special, I'm broke inside. Crashing slowly, the bugs are in me. Dirty computer breaking down. Picking my face up off the ground. I'll love you in this space and time. Cause baby, all I'll ever be is your dirty computer. Dirty computer. Searching for someone to fix my drive. Text message caught up in the sky. Oh, if you love me, won't you please reply? Can't you see that it's only me? Your dirty computer. Dirty computer. Dirty computer, dirty computer, I'll love you in this space and time, I'll love you in this space and time. Right. So, if you don't like what you see, swipe left. If you do like what you see, swipe right. Any questions? Sorry, but what is it I'm going to see? Right, apologies. First week. Didn't explain it clearly. Photos. Photos. Photos of Mr... Adam. Adam is fine. Right, great, of Adam. Photos of Adam, which he posted on the internet. On social media. Right, exactly, on social media. You'll see all the photos we've harvested. Harvested? Of, uh, of his legs, for example. Legs? For example then you'll swipe through them until you find the legs that you want to use. Use for the... Right, exactly. Sorry, should have made that clearer. You have his mouth. Um, yes, we have his mouth, his eyes, his... No, 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 I meant you. You have his mouth. Oh, right. Sorry, that was... <laughs> uh, it's just I'm, I'm seeing him everywhere at the minute. But he is everywhere. Now he's data. If you don't mind me asking, how did... Can we just crack on? Right, no, no, of course. Sorry, none of my business. It's fine. Forget we aren't meant to ask, but that feels, I don't know, cold somehow. It was so... the virus. Right, no. I'm sorry. I'm all clear. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, sh shall we start with the legs? The legs. The legs and feet? Uh, swipe left if you don't like what you see. And... Swipe right if I do. Yeah, I've got it. Right. Sorry, first week. You said. Right. Yes. Um, can we start with the legs and feet then, Denise? Who's Denise? Denise, legs and feet. Oh, my God. It's just a photo. They look so... Right? No. Lifelike, I know. It's been photoshopped, so... Actually, they do look pretty lifelike, don't they? Are you all right? 
Yeah, no, no, I'm fine. Do, do you um, want to use that image? Uh, no, yeah. They're just legs and feet, right? Well... <laughs> I couldn't even tell you what his legs and feet are like. Swipe right then. Oh, I just... Yep, think so, just swipe right. Right, great. Uh, they feel like flesh? It's just an enhanced photograph. But, but they do look fleshy. Are you okay? Denise, lock that legs and feet. Right, great. Now for the um, groins. G groins? Denise. Where did you find that? Um, yes, right. The dating app on which... We first met. Right, exactly. Uh, shall we um, use that image? Are there any more? Of his... Yep. Right, th that's the um, only one we have of his, I'm afraid. It will have to do then. Denise, lock that groin. Right, arms. Torsos. Heads. I can't. It, it's just a photo. I know, but they feel like flesh. Do they? Have you not felt them? No, and I don't want to. Are you okay to continue? Uh, I don't know. Right, okay, because I thought this is what you wanted. Uh, I, what I you know. volunteered for. <laughs> I know. Right, so I do you mind me asking why? What? No, uh, that's inappropriate. <laughs> well, why I want this? Yes. No, I shouldn't ask. Aren't supposed to. So. Well, why do you work here, if I'm allowed to ask? Um, always love tech. Always on my phone as a kid. Every break time, every night, my grand just sat there on my phone. Always wanted to get into tech too, but when grand died, I could. Finally had the time to get a job here. Why, why did you volunteer for this? Grief, uh, curiosity. And if he isn't real, he can't abandon me. He is real. He's data and data's real. Yeah, by real, I meant human. Humans are data. <laughs> At a scientific level, there is fundamentally no difference between a human and one of our holograms. Mm, but holograms can't abandon you. <laughs> are we abandoning the process? Bearing in mind, if we do, they'll have to charge you. Charge me? It's free. <laughs> if you finish the trial, if you make the product. The product. I, I know, I, it's horrible, but that's what they've told me to say. Are you okay to continue? Are you? They're just photos. They're just photos. Okay. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> right, good. Apologies, Denise. Can we see the heads? Are we swiping left or? Uh, I don't know. Um, oh, I don't know. H how do I pick which face of his I want to see forever? <laughs> well, I hate to push you, but we are against the clock. Um, if I swipe left on this one and then change my mind. I'm afraid we can't bring back previously seen photographs. <laughs> you can bring back the dead, but you can't well, bring not back exactly. previously seen photographs. Right, well, when you put it like that, if I could, I would. You can. I really can't. I don't know how. I'm new here, first week. <laughs> yeah, you've said. And with respect, this is free. Excuse me? There's nothing I can do. Okay. Okay. Right. So, are we swiping left or right on this photo? Um, well, it's a lovely photo. It is. So I kind of don't want to swipe left in case the others aren't as lovely. 
The choice is yours. He looks happy in this one. Yep. Um, sorry to rush Okay. You. Okay, God's sake. Right, great. Assemble the hologram. Thanks, Denise. So, just to clarify, his vocabulary and stock phrases will be drawn from everything he's ever posted online. His voice will be based on sound files of his voice, which he shared online too. Oh my God. That was quick, Denise. Adam? He has got my mouth, hasn't he? Sorry, but can I, uh, um... Uh, yes, of course. Um, I'll leave you to it. Wait. Uh, before you go, don't stay here. Excuse me? Well, you clearly don't want to. I don't blame you, as sick. You aren't. So leave. Before you're a hologram, go and be big and brilliant and human. <laughs> I'm not very big or brilliant. You are, inside. I know you are. I can sense it, your energy. And you have his eyes. Um, right. No. Thank you. What should we do? Wank at each other on the internet. You won't feel anything. You can't come. Dinner? You don't need to eat. Drink in a dance. You can't drink. I can't hold you to dance with me. We could talk. You can't listen. We could write. You don't have an imagination. We could draw. You don't know what drawing is. It's just a word to you. We could just be together. I miss you, Adam. I'm still here. You are. But not there. In here, you haven't left me. It's real. It's real. Well, thank you. Uh, I would love to be surrounded by the sound of applause, which I know I would be were I in the presence of an actual audience. But uh, certainly from my end, I'm going to add a few <laughs> claps in there because, uh, of course, uh, they're at least symbolic claps, we say, and, and, and I can see a few sort of visual representations of claps as well. Um, that was a, an extraordinary experience, actually. I must say, having known about this project, read this script, seen various iterations of the production this is actually the first time where the full force of what this project is has really landed i think it is there's something about the continuity of the whole show watching it continuously uh that has sort of been more than the sum of its parts so you know congratulations to both of you because i thought that was an incredibly absorbing and emotional experience and before i take questions and and, and please I want to invite everybody to, to add their questions, uh, which Molly's going to sort of feed through to me. Um, I, I'd love to ask a couple of questions myself. Uh, firstly, for James, I mean, obviously, the obvious question is, how does it feel watching it? Um, uh, I'd love you to say a little bit about the journey you've been on this year as well. Um, clearly, you had an extraordinarily open brief in some respects, um, but also um, as the year went on, you were finding yourself more and more you know, beginning to understand the possibilities, the technology we're going to engage with. Um, but you still had to stay true to your story and finding a way in which you could write something that, if you like, could only exist in this version, I suppose, has been your project. So I'd love to have a few thoughts from you 
at the end of this journey about how it's been as a writer. Yeah, thank you. So I think in terms of watching it now, it, it still feels anticlimactic to me. I think that is the thing I feel all the time because we haven't been in a room with an audience. So I feel like I'm watching uh, just a film of a rehearsal still. It is that sense of, uh, kind of sad to say, because it is a tech heavy project. But I think for me, for it to be theatre, it is about bodies in space and time. And I still feel like I'm lacking that element. But I'm still moved by the sweep of the story and the performances and what the tech brought to it. I think in terms of the journey, uh, I think when I first started thinking about what I would write for the brief, which was write a play about what playwriting might look in 50 years time, it was so open uh, that I just got very daunted by tech and thought I've got to write a story around tech. And I think that was my thinking at first. And so what I was writing didn't have heart or character really. I was just trying to serve new technology and toys. And then I remember having a conversation with you and the partners at Theatre Royal uh, and just said, write characters, but let the tech uh, bring those characters together, pull those characters apart, let the tech be part of the story and not just glitter on top of the story. And I think mm. that's been that process now. And I think that certainly came out tonight. Whilst I say it feels anticlimactic, it is solely that sense of I'm not in the room with those actors and that audience. And so that's so uh, contrary to what I'm used to as a playwright. But I think I'm still really... I invested in their stories and yeah, glad we went in that way of writing the characters more than the tech. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's an interesting way of bringing it down actually, because I was just really thinking about the tech as I was watching it. What is it doing? There are scenes that are impossible scenes, if you like, if you imagine them in a conventional piece of theatre. Uh, I mean, it's a remarkable fluency moments where people are talking uh, to telephone screens. Obviously, um, there are moments where uh, we're obviously in real time watching a messaging conversation taking place across a sort of broken piece of time, if you like, and very haunting actually, particularly when Adam zones out. And so, so sometimes you're actually representing something that is not physically experienced. Usually, it's digital. I mean, not not to make a total separation between the digital and the physical. And at other times, you're doing things which I would almost call expressionistic. So, you know, we're actually feeling the virus at times. You, know, you see this strange sort of cascade of sort of matter almost onto Adam. It feels like he's having the life drained out of him. So, you know, you you led on some of these fantastic innovations, Dan, and what, what did the text inspire you to want to do with the technology that you were bringing to bear on it? Um, I suppose in terms of what the, what the te text wanted me to do was, um, Sort of challenge and question this this notion of do these tools these technological tools help us to communicate or do they inhibit even if we feel that they're helping you know it is is the conversation and you know the interaction with the people via these platforms a good thing you know mm -hmm. i think that it's been an extraordinary year to do this particular play because those were questions that we were asking before we were also zoom proficient and mm -hmm. used to kind of remote working and all of those kind of things you know it's something we've been forced to um take on board into our lives but i, I still think that there's big questions around just because we can should we um you know i'm perfectly okay with with people challenging what we've done here in terms of whether it should be in an auditorium as well. You know, these are the questions that we're trying to ask with this show, I'm not for a second trying to say that all theatre should exist online. We're sort of saying in this yeah. show, we're examining this thing. Um, and for it to feel uncomfortable or anticlimactic or, or uh, um, disconnected in some way, I think is part of what we've made. That is, yeah. that, that is part yeah. of the question that we're asking. How, you know, what has 2020, 21 felt like? Um, mm -hmm. And I, th I think it's really relevant. Yeah, absolutely right. Because I think one of the things that's so powerful in the piece, and I must say, I must really commend the performers. I think they did some beautiful, delicate work in there. Is that feeling of ambiguity of feeling? I mean, it, it's summed up in the scene where Adam and Eve first almost meet. And uh, I mean, my God, that felt so recognisable, didn't it? That sense of being on the brink of experiences that you've forgotten to enjoy or you didn't know how to sort of carry them out and it's full of those 
mixed feelings that this time and technology bring. I mean, Tim Wright asked a question. Tim Wright was the sort of project leader for the whole of Future Inform, has been overseeing you know, all these projects. And he asked the question, do you see ways for online audiences to have some kind of presence in the space, some way of being with the theatre audience? So I guess Tim's imagining, you know, an, uh, which is actually going to happen more and more with theatres, the idea of liveness, people in the building, um, people at home or wherever they are sharing that experience. This is happening at the time, obviously, now in theatres. Can, does that, do you have an, an image of that, Dan, how that could be done optimally? James, does that interest you, that idea of these two types of audiences somehow coexisting? Dan, do you want to take it first? Yeah, Jen, Dan, do you want to go first? Yeah, Dan, I, mean, I think, in a sense, yeah. I was just going to say that um, I think one of the things that this project has helped us to kind of realise is how the sort of theatre production pipeline, when it wants to use these real-time technologies, can can make content and change content really, really quickly. I mean, considering the fact that because of COVID, our kind of rehearsal and workshop process really did get compacted into a, a you know a really intense short process even though the whole project was very long, the actual time where we were in a rehearsal room together was really, really short. And we were still able to kind of adapt and change and think about things and in a way that wasn't possible technologically a couple of years ago. If you wanted to do a video heavy show like this, then you had to have all of that mm. stuff ready in advance. So I think that there is the ability to create interesting um, performances that can adapt and change in real time and therefore, you know, potentially feed in inputs that are not there in the space even they could be online inputs as well um so kind of about audience but also kind of a process of making and showing i guess yeah which actually builds up on your point about this being a kind of phase one and i mean james for you what's the you know what's this where does it go now i mean obviously you know hopefully where it goes now is into a venue <laughs> um yeah. and i mean i i cannot stress enough how extraordinary it was that gle pulled off this within effectively a fortnight um, mm -hmm. from the process of development. Uh, I mean, that, you know, the, even a normal two people and a table uh, usually takes a little bit longer than a fortnight, doesn't it, in terms of theatrical time. So this extraordinary speed of rehearsal and realisation is, is really quite unique. Um, but what, what do you see as the next step for this, James? Yeah, I think, well, to answer that and Tim's question in the same answer, really, that sense of, for me, the thinking now is, can it exist in a room with a live audience? Because I think you get such a strong online experience because you're seeing that tech. But how can you see all that stuff in a room? So I think the next step for me is being in the room with the play and with people and seeing if it works as a play and not just a piece of uh, hybrid cinema, if you like. Uh, and then if it does work as a play and the audience respond to the kind of energy of the piece in the room and the shape of the night out that it would be then thinking how does that live audience experience the three layers of the play uh mm. in the room whether that's goggles whether that's a mesh on screen i think that's the next stage for tech as well as for the text mm. yeah i did really miss the laughter that i know would have come with this play. I was chuckling at home though, I must have said. So we've got a couple of questions. We've got one from Charlotte. James, aha, what soap are you writing for now? And do you see many parallels between soap and theatre? <laughs> oh, wow. That was okay. my fault because so I raised that soap earlier on. It is your fault. The soap is EastEnders, uh, to answer that question. And I think in terms of parallel between, what was the question between soap and theatre or TV and theatre? Yeah, soap and theatre. Soap, soap and theatre. Um, mm. I think all scenes are fundamentally built on the idea of a character is in pursuit of an objective and they're trying to get it uh, in the play and in TV. And I think soap opera is a condensed version of that, that uh, that's happening very, very quickly. Whereas in theatre, Adam wants to meet Eve and I might get 50 minutes out of that exchange, allowing me to explore themes and ideas in more depth, whereas I could never write a 50 minute scene on soap. So I think, mm -hmm. yeah, it's all driven by characters in pursuit of a goal and trying to get that in a scene. But I think theatre can allow a slower uh, version of that dynamic. Yeah. We'd love to see a future informed version of EastEnders, I have to say. That, that's got to oh, be. Oh, that's, that's that project. is phase two. And you said, what's phase two? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to set it in Albert Square. <laughs> um, there's a question from Henry Sutton. Henry's really the architect of future inform. And um, uh, he's asked the question is theatre script writing more collaborative than ever? 
or is the writer the key? Uh, that's a really interesting question, isn't it? Um, I mean, more collaborators than ever right now during this time, or is, is it something about these new technologies coming on stream? Uh, I mean, Dan, just a question for you. What's it? How did you feel working with a new text? What did that do for you uh, as somebody that, you know, as you say, you've worked on a lot of events, you've obviously done all sorts of theatre, but you've watched this text evolve as you've evolved your technological language to support it. And, I, you know, this is quite an unusual form of collaboration, isn't it, really, to have the writing all the way up to the point of realisation. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I suppose it was a more typical process that you might experience, like in a devised process. Um, James was really um, sort of responsive and open and giving with his sort of creative, with, with his creativity, never kind of closed or um, stubborn, passionate, of course, but um, <laughs> you know, you're really fluid, really fluid. Um, so it, it was very, very comfortable, really. I think that the ideas evolved together. I think there were certain sort of conversations and meetings that happened that really accelerated the process. And then there were obviously sort mm. of lulls as well, um, which mm. is, you know, typical of any process. But um, I think that when the sort of scene started to come together in like version three or whatever it was of the, of the script, and it really felt like we were honing in on what we were saying about the technology and it being about the kind this kind of like um help or hindrance kind of uh, messaging but then i felt it, it really sort of like bolted down really quickly after that and then it just became mm. about detail and sort of embellishment of character and story and reasoning behind you know what why are the choices happening and then mm. the visual design sort of came after that the visual design came quite late mm. actually um uh, incredible, by the way, an incredible team of, uh, of student technicians and designers. I mean, you know, mm. the, the Guildhall's team of uh, trainee artists, uh, designers, lighting designers and so on have really been shown off to great effect, I think, here. There's another really great question from Jack Ferry, who's currently on the MA. Hi, Jack. Uh, do you think streaming, filming, th risk losing what makes theatre unique? It's temporal mortality created and destroyed every night compared to other narrative forms. Or do we gain more than we lose? It's a really, really lovely question, isn't it? Um, James, you know, in a sense, you've already touched a little bit on some of those losses as well as those gains. Um, but that yeah. thing about this, this sticks around, does that really change things for you? Do you know, I think I've thought about this a lot uh, as the project's kind of wound down. And I think for me, theatre is about bodies in space and time and it is about turning technology off i think that's why i love it i think it and certainly what i think theater might be in the future as well for that gesture of the project that in in the future it might be one of those few spaces left where we do get together with strangers and turn tech off to share a live <laughs> human experience so mm. i think we do lose something and i think that's why i feel anticlimactic with it and to go back to henry's question as well that sense of i think theater is so collaborative because to me playwriting is not literary you're making an event you're shaping energy in a room. And I think that's why I feel like this tonight, that I'm thrilled that it's here, but I think I want to feel that energy in the room. And so I do feel something is lost. And um, mm. that feels like the next phase. I feel like we've got all this fantastic material now and all these tools to play with, but it's then making sure it can be a play. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I found myself wondering which bit I was watching most closely. Was it the bottom or the top of the screen? Um, and it was a really interesting different scenes I answer that question in different ways, if you like, you know, which is why are you saying earlier on, Dan, you know, the camera position we have isn't necessarily where you would be sat in the audience, of course, because actually uh, you might be much closer to this material than in fact uh, the camera often was. Um, but so many scenes that, I mean, like the scenes where they were together and texting or watching the films, I think, and, and I think Eve says something like, can, can we switch this off? Or Adam, I can't remember who says it. That felt so powerful, actually. I think to see that in a theatre, to see tech disavowed by the characters on stage, you know, it would be strangely moving, actually. It was moving in this format, mm. I thought. Um, Dan, do you have a response to Jack's question about this time element? Theatre, you know, different every night, as Mike Alfred's once said about theatre. Mm. Um, and I think you yeah. would want this to be different every night as well, wouldn't you? The, the, the sense the production process reflects that. Uh, yeah, I do have a response, and it's, it is different to James's actually. Um, mm -hmm. I think that um, for me, 
this sort of evolution of how we present work and um, how we receive work is is really interesting and i think that if theater is going to involve this sort of technology it can't do it by sacrificing what it is so at the moment we have an issue here where there is no live play there is a series of sort of workshop outcomes that have been recorded and and presented and that, that's what we've done as part of this project but i think that it could really work and be strong is where you use online communication, you use apps and tools and other other things like we've been playing around with here to make what's happening on stage translatable and readable for contemporary audiences. Um, the, 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 the fluency with which people receive information via these medium is, is really profound. And I think that for mm. theatre to close its doors to that completely, they're actually missing a big trick where they can they can communicate to um, people in really really powerful ways um, without losing the heart and soul of as as you're sort of saying bodies in spaces in and, and it being time based i think there there is an amalgam of those things that will work well together oh, yeah. hmm. yes it's almost when the tech can fail in real time as well you know it's something about allowing the rawness of technology fashioning and a live theatre event. I think that's very exciting. Um, yeah, I mean, I, just, I, I for example, that. Mm, sorry, okay, Steve, yeah. I was just saying things things like, for example, characters having a uh, social media presence, that, that, that kind of thing. So you could actually, before you go to the theatre, you can log on to Eve's profile and see what she's all about and judge her before you even get mm. there, like we do. You go on, you're go, you going to meet mm. someone for the first time now, you're going to Facebook them, you're going to Google them before you meet them. Mm. And this is part of how we live the lives that we live. So theatre should reflect, should be reflecting that, you know. Theatre talks to us about Oddly the Oddly enough, that was one of your early ideas, actually, James, I seem to recall, was something of that nature, where there'd be a lot of pre-show sort of technological engagement absolutely mm. yeah i know well first and foremost i think i completely agree with you dan in that sense theater has got to embrace that sense of tech and those modes of communication and the language of those forms of communication uh but i think that first idea as well yeah we were going to create like a re reality tv show in which adam and steve adam and eve uh adam and steve there we go always writing about games <laughs> Ad adam and eve comes in and then the audience decide uh what happens to them with smart devices uh and yeah they were going to meet those characters digitally before they came to the theater so it was all all going to go in that direction but i'm glad we've i'm glad we've gone in this direction instead now mm -hmm. now we've had a lovely conversation which is brilliant in fact we've now gone over time i'm not sure that necessarily presents problems but just if there's one last question coming through the chat if anybody wants to quickly bang one in um i'm staring at it intensely and not seeing anything, which is absolutely <laughs> fine, because I think we've had a very emotionally potent evening. And I think we all need to sort of go out and breathe some fresh air now. So all that remains me for to do is to thank so much, uh, James and Dan, for your incredible work this year and for this incredible show. Um, and I you know, really want to sit in a theatre and watch it with you very soon. And let's hope that happens within the year. And, and thank everybody for turning up tonight and watching with us. Uh, mm -hmm. It's made it it's made it an event which has been great so goodbye from me goodbye from dan and goodbye james from me and I'm with yeah, the three bye -bye. Ronnies. <laughs> goodbye from him <laughs> <laughs> yes yes good night everybody bye bye good night thanks